to 2122. Today we're going to talk about tangent lines and have an introduction to limits. So let's start with average rate of change. I've got the formula here for the average rate of change of a function over an interval, and you can see it's simply the slope formula for the line that goes between these two points. We call that the secant line. So in this example down here, when, when our function is velocity and our independent variable is time, we call average rate of change average velocity. So let's find the average velocity for this function, s of t is 16t squared, over the interval from t equal 1 to 2. So that's going to be s of 2 minus s of 1 over 2 minus 1. All right, well, that's 64 minus 16 over 1, which is 48. And that's going to be the units would be feet per second. And then I went ahead and I found the average velocity over a smaller interval from 1 to 3 halves and found that that was 40. So geometrically, what we've done here is we found the slope of two secant lines. The slope of this line was 48, and the slope of this line was 40. The question is, in calculus, what is the slope of the curve at t equal 1? Not between t equal 1 and 2, but simply at t equal 1. And to answer that, we talk about instantaneous rate of change. So what we're going to do is look at the limiting value of the slopes of the secants as the point from, let's call this p and this q, as q approaches p. And so we're going to change up the notation a little bit as we talk about slopes of tangents. We're going to let p be x f of x and q be x plus h f of x plus h. Now the difference quotient, which you computed in precalculus, is the function f of x plus h minus f of x over h. Now as we let h go to zero, that gives us the slope m of the tangent line. And we'll talk about limits in a few minutes. Okay, so here's an example. First of all, we want to find the slope of the tangent by finding the difference quotient and then setting h equal to zero as soon as we can. So mpq, this is part a, is I want f of x plus h, that's 1 minus 3 x plus h, quantity squared, minus parentheses 1 minus 3x squared, that's f of x, all over h. Okay, if I set h equal to zero now, I'm in trouble. I get zero over zero. So I have to do some simplification. So this is 1 minus, let's do FOIL up here, and at the same time distribute the negative 3. So that would be negative 3x squared minus 6xh minus 3h squared. And now I'll distribute this minus, minus 1 plus 3x squared. You should pause the video and make sure that you could do those steps if you had to. All right, and then that's over h, and now the 3x squareds cancel and the 1s cancel. And everything in the numerator has an h in it, so I'm going to factor that out. Negative 6x minus 3h over h. Now I can cancel the h's, and I get negative 6x minus 3h. Okay, now we can set h equal to 0. Now set h equal to 0 to get the slope of the tangent line is negative 6x. And pretty soon we're going to call that, let me just scroll down here, Pretty soon what we're going to call what we just did, taking the limit as h goes to 0 of the difference quotient. And that's a much easier notation than writing in English, now let's now set h equal to 0. Okay, so what is this giving us? Let's graph this parabola. It's a parabola, it opens down, and we can see that the slope is going to depend on x. For positive x's, the slope will be negative, and for negative x's, the slope will be positive. Okay, that seems reasonable. Okay, next part, find an equation for the tangent line at x equal 1. So for the tangent line, we need two things. We need the slope and a point on the line. So let's find our x naught, y naught first. At x equal 1, we want our x naught, y naught in the, in the point slope formula for a line. And that's equal to what we're told x is 1. And to find y naught, we want f of 1. Okay. Well, that's 1, and then I plug 1 into y equals f of x to get negative 2. So my point's down here, and I need the slope. Well, I know the slope at any point is negative 6x. So m evaluated when x is 1 
is negative 6. So I've got my slope, and I've got my x0, y0, and I can use point slope. y minus y0, which would be y plus 2, is negative 6 times x minus x0, which is minus 1. And then I can clean that up a little. y equals negative 6x, and then that would be plus 4. And there's my tangent line. And here is a graph on Desmos of the function, the parabola, and the tangent line. And you can see it's very reasonable. The tangent line passes through 1, negative 2, and it definitely looks tangent to the curve at that point. And I've summarized what I did here at the end of the page. Now let's talk about limits. The limit of f of x as x approaches c equals l. That's a, that's a mouthful. But we write it like this. And what it means is as x gets really close to c, but not equal to c, the values of the function get really close to l. So it's easiest to see with a picture. Here's a graph of y equals f of x, and we want the limit as x approaches 2 of f of x. So we look down here on the x-axis, and we go close to 2 from either side, and we see the value of the function is approaching 4. So the limit is 4. Okay, the next one is at 6. So we're going to go towards 6 from both sides and look and see what value the function is approaching, what y value. That's 6, even though there's a hole up there. This limit is 6, but note f of 6 is actually equal to 4. That doesn't matter, because when you take the limit, you just want to get close to 6. Okay, at 8, something very strange happens. If we come in from the left, we're approaching 2. But if we come in from this side, the values of the function are approaching 6. Since those don't agree, we say the limit does not exist. And we'll talk about that more on the next page when we talk about left-hand limits and right-hand limits. This is the actual math definition of limit. You don't have to know that, but I thought you might be curious. Some important limits. The limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x, we're going to prove this limit eventually, but for now, we're going to take it at face value that it's 1 from the graph. But note that sine x over x actually doesn't exist at 0, because you're dividing by 0, but the limit is actually 1. Okay, two important limits that we'll use next time. This limit is a, and this limit is c. Now, these will make a lot of sense if you see an example. So for example, the limit as x approaches 2 of 5 is 5. Let's look at that geometrically. Let's graph the function f of x equals 5. So this is 5 on the y value. Now, 2 is down here, and we're approaching 2. And the values of the function are always stuck at 5. So the limit is 5. All right, the next one, for example, the limit as x approaches 2 of x is 2. Here's a picture. The function is f of x equal x, and we're approaching 2. The y values are equal to the x values, so the y values also approach 2. Okay, some special cases. Let's talk about one-sided limits, and then we'll talk about limits at infinity. So a left-hand limit means you're coming in at the at the value c from the left. And we, the way we write that mathematically is x approaches c, so x arrow c, and then there's a minus sign above the c. And so in this picture, if I'm coming in at c and the limit is l, that means over here on the y-axis, this number is l. Conversely, if I approach c from the right, which we denote by a plus sign, I'm coming in this way. So this is left-hand limit, and this is right-hand limit. And in this picture, this would be m here. And we have a theorem that says the limit as x approaches c of f is l if and only if both the left-hand limit is l and the right-hand limit is l. So the right-hand limit has to equal the left-hand limit for the limit to exist. So now we can make sense of some more limits here. Let's find the values of the function, and then left-hand limit, right-hand limit, and limit. So f of 2. The solid dot is up here, 
So f of 2 is 2. Left hand limit, I come in from this direction. The y values are approaching 1. Right hand limit, I come in from this direction. The y values are approaching 2. So the limit does not exist because the left hand limit is not equal to the right hand limit. Okay, f of 4. f of 4 is 4 because the solid dot is up at 4. But that doesn't affect the limit. The left hand limit is 3 and the right hand limit is also 3 so the limit is 3 and finally f of 6 well there's no dot filled in over 6 so this does not exist dne the left hand limit is 3 the right hand limit is 2 so the limit does not exist okay last topic is limits that are plus or minus infinity so let's take this graph of y equals 1 over x as I approach 0 from the right, the function goes up forever. I get 1 over positive values approaching 0. That's infinity. If I approach infinity, then 1 over x approaches 0. Down here, if I approach 0 from the left, this is 0 from the right up here in the green. And this is 0 from the left. This is negative infinity, and if I approach inf negative infinity, I get zero again. So I've used these facts. One over plus or minus infinity is zero, and one over zero is going to be plus or minus infinity depending on whether you're approaching zero through positive values or negative values. So here's a couple of examples. The limit as x goes to 2 from the left of 3 over x minus 2. Okay, that's 3 over the denominator is approaching 0, but is it approaching 0 from the left or the right? So here's 2. I'm coming in from this direction, so the x values are less than 2. So this is 0 from the left, and so this is going to be negative infinity. And if I approach from the right, I get 3 over 0 through positive values. That will be infinity. And we say that the function has a vertical asymptote at at x equal 2, and here's a picture of that. So I'm going, as I here's 2 on the x-axis. As I approach from the right, I get infinity. As I approach from the left, I get negative infinity. All right, and one more. Okay, again, this is going to be a number over 0, so this will be plus or minus infinity. I've got negative 2 on top. I'm approaching 0 from the left, but I'm squaring x. So this will be 0 through positive values. So this will go to negative infinity. All right, and that is the end of this section. In the next section, we'll talk about limit laws.